therapy. We're picking up again on that series we said we were going to start doing, which was us discussing Romancing the Beat by Gwen Hayes. Hi, Kate. Hi. <laughs> was I supposed to say hi, Marty? I don't know. Are we supposed to do anything? Um, I think the one thing we can rely true. on with... um with our episodes is that they're never going to be that um, systematic, right? Like they're always going to have their own. They won't be formulaic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your formulas here. Yes. No outlines or beat sheets Not for us. For us. <laughs> we are winging it constantly. Every time. Endlessly. As if that wasn't obvious. <laughs> so. so how's everything going? Have you been doing any writing? Uh, I have been doing a bit of writing lately. Uh, I wrote, you know, right before the, I would say like an hour ago. And so that was nice, you know, getting, like having a bit of time to get back into mm-hmm. it. Get your mind wrapped in that. Yeah. In yeah. That and place. to like, let it be fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yay. Yeah. Because I think I was, if you let a project sit too long, or at least when I do, mm-hmm. it kind of starts becoming this kind of like rotten, stale thing in the fridge. Mm-hmm. I think I've talked about that before. And I just feel bad for not being productive on it. And I, I took a chapter to our critique group the other okay. day, and it's been months, possibly like a year since I read a chapter. Probably not that long. Is this Night and Shade? No, this is my orc story, my sequel to oh. Love, Laugh, Lich. Has it? It can't have been Which that I long. Which I keep saying I'm going to do. Because you wrote Love, Laugh, Lich in 2021. Oh, yeah. And I did read you guys some chapters. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited you're working on that one because I think it's it sounds freaking adorable. Yeah, it's it's so nice to get like a confidence booster and like hear that yeah people do like yeah. this while you're working on it instead of kind of leaving yourself in the dark and being like what if no one gets my humor yeah like we've said before humor is hard humor is so hard and a lot of the time I think you can definitely feel like you're just like I think it's funny but there's a good chance no one else will think that that is where I'm at because in the rewrites for Banded Together, I open with like this ridiculous conversation and this and that. Mm. Revisiting it, I'm like, is this funny? Is this funny? Or is this like someone's going to read this and cringe because it's so not funny? Yeah. And it, I hate that face even, I like, make just humor. when something's not funny, but it's meant to be funny. Oh, I yeah. hate that face. <laughs> I don't ever want to see it. Yeah. Like, the contempt I feel as a reader for whoever wrote what I'm reading when I come across a line that I'm like, you think this is funny? This is the dumbest thing I've ever read. No, <laughs> it's not even contempt But like for in me. the moment, I'm just like, Ugh. It's like, Im- like secondhand embarrassment that I feel. It's not even contempt, which I wish it was oh, contempt. No, it's straight contempt I for wish me. it was because secondhand embarrassment for me, like I would rather somebody hold me in contempt than be like, I am so embarrassed for you. Like, that is, that is big cringe. I don't like that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, like, it's definitely me at my meanest. Like, I think when I'm, oh, brain, please work. <laughs> Come with me, brain. <laughs> Join me on this conversation. <laughs> when, it, when I'm, like, actually, I don't know when I am. Uh, be, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Can't wait to edit that out. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> or just keep it. I'm tempted to leave. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Some mad tunes. Osh gosh. A gosh gosh. I didn't know Osh, you gosh. could scat. <laughs> cool, daddy. <laughs> Please don't call me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Only when you're a cool Not daddy. <laughs> Kate has big daddy yeah, energy. Yeah, no, I feel like sometimes like when I'm reading a book and like I wanted to like it and I'm not liking it, I get I become the meanest person ever and it's not fair to the person who wrote the book that I'm continuing to put myself through something I don't like and therefore I'm progressively growing meaner every oh, no. second. And so like when I finally get to the line that breaks me and I just want to be like this is stupid. You know, uh-huh. like it's I'm I've just become a monster at that. Like point. you should have DNF'd it so long ago. Yeah, I, like I'm saying this because I don't want anyone to like hear this and think, "Oh God, I'm so frightful for my books now." Mm-hmm. Or I don't want people who are writers or creators listening to us to think, "Oh, this is how everyone or 
a vast majority of people will perceive my art. Well, like we, <laughs> you know, no, I don't. I think most of the time people are in a neut- more neutral, neutral or than charitable. We are. Mood. Yeah, I think that there's a difference between people who enjoy reading and writers who enjoy reading. Um, people who enjoy reading, they, it more it gets a chance to wash over them more. I think, and it doesn't get dissected the same way. If you're familiar with the writing process or any creative mm-hmm. process, because Okay, I'm gonna bring Austin up again. Uh, my boyfriend. <laughs> uh, whenever I watch movies with my boyfriend, my boyfriend. Um, I feel like that girl every time I say my boyfriend. Well, I, I don't know. I just can't get that feeling off of me. I do not resent. I just want to talk about him like he's a normal person. Don't. Don't ever do that. Every time you what, the voice? No, every time you talk about him, you must do that voice. And my boyfriend, okay. Austin. <laughs> Just so you can tell, I'm aware of what it sounds like. <laughs> I find it charming. God damn it if I don't do anything unironically. <laughs> who would I be then? Yeah, no, who would I be if I was not a deeply cynical, cruel, mean, <laughs> terrible... Oh no, no but I me. love you. <laughs> no, okay, I'm just going down the... the... <laughs> We'll, we'll do this thing where we watch a movie and he'll be like, wasn't that great? And I'll be like, well, there were a couple of points that snagged on me. And I think the editor should have done this differently. Uh-huh. And he'll be like, so you didn't like it? And I'll be like, I'm undecided whether or not I liked it. <laughs> Whenever I feel like we watch things together, I feel like he passively watches things and I'm like aggressively yeah i understand you know snipping things up as i consume them sometimes i just can't get out of that critical i don't really know how to get out of that critical state right because like i will say that i mean obviously your understanding of filmmaking is more complex than mine probably but like andrew and i can't stop watching things that critically either right like that's Part Mm. of the fun of media is really, like, having an in-depth, like, in-the-moment assessment of what we're watching. And so, like, pausing it and talking about, like, a shot or a conversation or, you know, stuff like that that's happening on screen is, like, a part of our viewing. But then, like, I will talk to my friend Danielle about something and she very much, like Austin, just has a more passive, like, experience with watching things. And... yeah. It's just a different, it's a different approach. And I think that, you know, being able to be more passive (laughs) can allow you to enjoy things more thoroughly. But like we've said before, like, okay, so if I'm reading something and there's a line that's supposed to be funny and it makes me feel secondhand embarrassment, someone else might be like, oh my God, that was the funniest part of that book. Like it is totally, totally person to person in an opinion. I told you, um, there... I'm not going to name the book, but there's a book that I did not enjoy. <laughs> it's a very popular book. A popular book I had high expectations for because a lot of people really raised my expectations mm-hmm. for it. They said, oh, this is such good writing. And I was like, well, then I want to read it. And then, you know, I just felt it didn't meet the standards that I had inflated for mm-hmm. it. <laughs> like, it's an all right book. But so, like, I had, I, I was like, no, I don't like it at all. <laughs> and then my cousin, who I adore, she's... You know, she she's delightful and demanding Aww. is her. She she wrote that little tagline for herself. And so I'm like, cute. you know what? That's right. I love it. And uh, during the pandemic, I hadn't seen her for a while. And then I went to visit her and she went, have you read this book? And I had this kind of pit drop in my stomach. Like, oh, God, I have to pretend to like this book because she's so excited about it. And I do want to talk to her about books because mm-hmm. we've never really talked about books before and but you know so but so now this thing keeps happening that every book I've hated <laughs> she'll be like oh my god did you read this I loved it I'll be like so you guys are just like completely dying. opposite sides of like yeah but like I do I feel like it's nice to be able to talk to her and like see how she appreciates things and that does make me try to like give things another yeah. chance well and like curmudgeonly you know like just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't make it good or bad. Like, it's yeah, just exactly. where Like, I'm there at. is audiences mm-hmm. out there. There are audiences out there for everything. And I think indie authors know this best, that it's just a matter. It's not, it's not that no one likes your book. It's that you're not reaching the people. Yeah. You may not be reaching the people who would love your book best. Yeah, so you have to, like, look at how you're marketing it. And get it in front of the right people. T. Taylor, and I can't remember her actual first name right now because she writes, this nonfiction book is written under T. Taylor and it's 
oh god now i'm not even gonna be able to remember the title but it's like seven figure author or something along those lines i will put it in the show notes she had like this moment where she realized like there's tropes and then even deeper there's universal fantasies and Mm -hmm. That has been a really interesting concept to me, like in thinking about how I tell people about my books and like making sure that the trope actually does what it's meant to do. Yeah. Like if you're going to use a trope to market, you need to like make sure you're using the trope properly, that you're not better off using another trope to describe what's going on in your book. Or even in the book, like making sure that the things that excite the people that are interested in this trope are there oh yeah like if you want to do like an only one bed scene but like they're both terrified of a monster under the bed and it's not sexy yeah at all. yeah <laughs> like you know you want to like that's obviously a weird example <laughs> and extreme but you like it's like you want to get the tone right you want to that's totally that like um twitter thing going on like you're bucking the one bed <laughs> <laughs> there's this you know give me a second i'm gonna go tweet uh, it now. that's so Thank cute you. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that I'm mean. <laughs> so uh, there's this Twitter thing going and some people might know about it, but like people are like bucking the romance genre by making the older brother not care if the best friend dates their sibling. So it's just like these cute How little things. How can you things. quote yourself well, I couldn't think of anything and else. be like people I like? No, I didn't say people are, people are like you a-hole. <laughs> and I do like mm. me. You know what? Both are true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we talk about Gwen Hayes? We should. At some we point. should. Um. <laughs> Hold your horses, Gwen. So I will say, because we're on phase two in our conversation series, this is the phase I probably have the most trouble with. Really? Yeah. Because this is like... That is interesting. That's really interesting that it's interesting to you. <laughs> You don't feel like I have the most trouble with this? Because this is kind of like where they're supposed to actually be like happiness and love. (laughs) And like, that's when I'm Mm -hmm. like usually having my, the hardest part is like, I can't stop the angst while they're happy. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Because you kind of gravitate towards it. I do. Apparently. I don't even know how to not. Mm. Okay. So. In this phase, we're in the falling in love phase. We've got no way to. We've got inkling of desire, deepening desire. Maybe this could work. And midpoint of love. Plot thrust. What? Just kind of tacking that on. Midpoint of love, plot thrust. Yes. Like in in parentheses, plot thrust. Plot thrust. What do you mean by that? Well, mostly because I'm reading the chapter heading and that's... (laughs) Oh, okay. That's what, what it says, but... It, it's a false high. Um, false high? Yeah, that's what she says. Oh, right, yeah. okay. You probably took notes where I didn't. I, don't, just I didn't take the... notes. I have their PD, the PDF in front of me. I'm oh, cheating. It's okay. an open book test. We're just on different pages. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on this phase? I well, There's something somewhere in this part of the book where she, Gwen Hayes talks about, she mentioned something like the, about the three dates mm-hmm. and, you know, it like in a, in a rom-com movie, mm-hmm. the three dates, it, it's like, this is the montage where they fall in mm-hmm. love because a lot of rom-coms make use of a montage and it's, it's the, I always think of this section as the three dates section. Okay. Throw, show three separate events where these two start to like each other a little bit more each time. And when I say dates, it doesn't need to be a date date that they decided on. It just needs to be an area, a time where the two of them ended up in contact or the same place. You mm-hmm. know, it's an it's a moment of their interaction. So that really highlights them starting to take interest in one another or deepening interest. Like you're it's up to you to decide what point of interest they're at. The three dates thing Because you've mentioned that to me before. And I really love it in theory, but when I try to execute it, it makes me feel really panicked. (laughs) Like, I don't know why. Really? It's weird. Because then it's like when I get past this phase, I'm like, wait, were there the three dates? Were there the three dates? (laughs) Like, and I have to like go back and like think like what scenes would be the dates. But in my books, typically they're like, they're forced in the same room 
all of the time. Right? So yeah. I keep on trying to do like epistolary stories, but like I can't because I just want them to be forced to be face to face constantly. So I have trouble with like the three dates because I'm like, no, nah, they've only, they've been on a date this entire book. Like it's 50,000 words of dates. <laughs> like, Well, so like I think of her example, I think she gives at the end of the book, she gives a quick rundown of this is how a story like this mm-hmm. can hit all these beats. And she gives Which I love. the example of a couple snowed in at the library or something. Mm-hmm. And so they go through the whole arc in 24 hours. And they're in pretty much one location for the whole thing. But what I think is like, you can have them in a different room and for each date, quote unquote, have them. Um, it's just a different topic of conversation each time, you know, like, you know, you you spend all day in your house with your yeah. kids, right? Mm, don't I just. That's how, I, don't make, I want to rephrase that. So you, but in this exactly pandemic. True. <laughs> no need to rephrase. It's my life. I don't know. I felt like I phrased that very badly. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. You do nothing all day. It's not that I do nothing. I'm trapped in this house. (laughs) You don't talk to anyone. No, it's the truth. (laughs) (laughs) You started working. Who do I talk to now? (laughs) (laughs) No. No, you're a realtor. You get out. You sit in show houses. Yeah, but not right now. It's winter. (laughs) You just told me about a, a house you got a lot of writing done because you're waiting for people to come in yeah yeah but like yeah it, they didn't and that was nice <laughs> so like, i love my quiet <laughs> yes but open it still houses. counts as going it out does. i love quiet open houses there's like nothing better than a quiet open house honestly it sounds ideal it's lovely Sitting in a new location where oh. you can snoop around. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you're just sitting there quiet and warm and get to write. That's what I usually like to do when I'm there, but sometimes I just binge watch shows. And yeah, sometimes I work, yeah. which is great too. But <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely because, yeah, you're just waiting for people to show up. It's great. Yeah. But so, like, you know, uh, back to my okay, okay. your day. Yeah. So, say you have your day with your two kids, and Andrew's been at work the whole day, and when he comes home, he says, can you tell me three events that happened today? Mm -hmm. And you could probably break up three events out of that whole day, like, Ash tripped and fell, and hit his face. I don't know. That's so awful. He's two, Um, so The dog ran outside. (laughs) That one's happened before, I don't know. I was like, was that overly morbid? Here, let's fantasize about the child falling. (laughs) You didn't say he broke anything. He's okay. <laughs> Even in the story, he's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, Jude painted a bunch, and then she got some in her hair. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then, uh huh. You know, okay. Three things. Okay. Three things that could be in a movie. Its own kind of scene that takes up time. Jude's a little fat. You know. Okay. All right. I don't want to impose my three dates understanding of this. Mm-hmm. The falling in love section of. Gwen Hayes' thing, it's just that's how I really digested it. And because I have a film background, that's why I kind of hooked on to that. Mm-hmm. That, makes sense. that does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I was listening to another podcast and uh, the person, the author on there who I can't remember her name, was saying how when she and her friends like write together, they don't just write these beats, they stomp on them. So, yeah, you have said this every oh, time we've I? talked about Gwen Hayes. That, I'm cutting you off. That can't possibly be what I'm going to do from here on out. <laughs> I would never just in do fact, that. I think you talked about this in episodes that weren't about Gwen Hayes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm, You're not allowed to quote this woman who you didn't name don't even the first remember time her name. you did this. But I'm going to do it every time now, Kate. Like, <laughs> until this series is done. And then I might just pull no, it out of my backpack. we don't stomp on anything. Oh, we, we have downstairs neighbors. We stomp on them. You make your neighbor want to hit, like, the, the broom to the ceiling. That's how loud you stomp. Believe it or not, listener, hitting the broom with the ceiling is something I've edited out of three podcasts now. <laughs> This would be the third. Do you know how long it's been since I've lived in an apartment and I never had noisy neighbors and never did that? (laughs) No. Even if I had noisy neighbors, I would not do that. Like, so I don't know why I keep on referencing it. I had a, I lived in a convent for like a minute. That's right, you did. Every time you say that, I'm like, whoa, I'm going to do a second. (laughs) It sounds wild. It does sound it's wild. like where did oh it sounds the opposite. It feels like of it wild. should explain something. 
Oh, no, because, you know, I also lived with a bunch of other not nuns <laughs> in this convent, and I had to end up moving my bed from one wall to the other because I could hear too much of the sex noise wow. right next to me. Wow, that's strange. To, like, yeah. right next to you. Yeah, that would feel strange. Because the walls aren't great there. The ceilings are very high. <laughs> the walls are thin. The doors are so heavy, they slam and echo. Oh, my God. So you really loved it there, is what you're telling me. I actually really did oh, like it there. Uh, this is like the first point where I had a car on campus. Uh, and because this was a point where um, I had gotten several parking tickets for... Because I knew what day the head of the film department taught what his one class. So I knew I could park in his spot and be guaranteed his spot. That's hilarious. All the other days of the week. And, th- and then I forgot my car there, one of the days he was supposed to be there. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> and I got booted. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so when I finally could park at the convent, um, yeah, it was nice. Um, so this is like off topic, but we watched uh, Don't Look Up. Oh, yeah. How was well, it? we had to watch it in two doses because it was like, oh, this oh, is yeah. a lot. Too topical. This is a lot to digest. <laughs> like, <laughs> um... It was really good. I very much suggest it. But yeah, I mean, whew. we watched like the first 25 minutes and we were both like, I'm going to need time. I'm going to need time. So, <laughs> uh, then we st- Rarely does a movie do that Oh to my me. gosh. Well, especially like, usually if it does that, I'm like, I am too stressed to continue going and I'm just going to oh, not yeah. finish it. You, you don't really watch horror, no. but... Um... Have you ever seen Midsummer? No, you've told me about it though. I've told you that the opening is such a fucking punch. Yeah. In the chest. Ugh. God, I saw like the first five minutes of it while I was staying in a hotel recently, and I was like, I was just flipping through the channels, and I saw it, and then I was like, Oh wait, we're right, almost at this. Oh no! Point. I have to change the oh, channel. No. Oh my god. But okay, so we watched Don't Look Up, and you were talking about the convent, and it reminded me of msu campus and it takes like she's a doctorate student at msu right jennifer lawrence's and she's there's a scene where she's jogging and i'm like that doesn't look like msu right because it's like it they did a decent job because msu was a really pretty campus lots of red brick buildings and like sprawling green lawns and it's very pretty right and you're just like no there's that's not msu but it was good but then there was a scene where uh, Leo DiCaprio was supposed to be on a Lansing street, a Lansing, Michigan street. And for one thing, mm. he's, she's like, where are you? And he's like, I'm in Lansing, Michigan. And both Andrew and I are like, oh, no, you are not. <laughs> like, <laughs> you could have looked at a picture. <laughs> like that is, that's not even like the most Lansing looking New York street you could have found. <laughs> like that is not. Oh my God. Lansing is very sprawling and it does not have tall buildings and it like the tallest building is like i don't know like 15 stories no it's not that the tallest building is probably like eight stories <laughs> and it okay. has no other tall buildings around it so the fact that this is like a very tall building situation it was it was ridiculous i was like that is nowhere near lansing <laughs> like anyway it was just like a goofy like movie moment but yeah the whole movie other than that and it's you know really only gonna be something that's like particular to somebody in our area other than that i think the movie was just like was just really well done so which is and here you were saying you wanted more stories to take place in michigan but do it you're like that's not michigan (laughs) get the actual get the actual film it here or don't do it (laughs) i need to say that more more uh midwestern Film it here or don't do it. I'm going to be real with you. They're more likely to film in Canada. I know they are. Yeah. It's all about like tax laws. Exactly. About filming. In 2010, I want to say, there was like a tax. I can't think of the proper word, but there was a tax like discount for filming in Michigan. So like we Hmm. actually had a lot of films made in Michigan in that like year. Very briefly. Yeah. So, like, Detroit, Flint, Grand Rapids, but not anymore. Okay, yeah. We had a similar thing in New Jersey where it had been gone for a while and it had been reinstated. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of filming happens in New Jersey anyway, but I must be wrong. Because Clerks was a really big deal. (laughs) Clerks. I'm glad that we first... God, okay, so they came back to film Clerks 4 or whatever it's called. And... My boyfriend's brother works at a 
convenience store and he's telling us about I'm how sorry, at, you didn't say that correctly. He's like my boyfriend's brother works. No, in you need to say store. it correctly. My boyfriend's brother. <laughs> my boyfriend's brother. Thank you. <laughs> uh yes, works at the convenience store and he Say that three times now. <laughs> He's been telling us about how the the guys from the the clerks guys, Kevin Smith, uh, not Kevin Smith. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, Kevin Smith, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I don't know Silent Bob. I have and Jay, his book. You would you think know? I remember his name, right? <laughs> and the uh, the the tall yeah, the Jay guy. guy. Yeah, Jay. Okay, yes, Jay and Silent Bob would come in and out of the convenience store, and he's like, "Are they scouting?" And it's like, I think they're just getting lunch. <laughs> Oh, and apparently it was like, oh, and they they dropped their laptop off at Best Buy and we had to work on it for a day. And I'm like, this is the most New Jersey thing <laughs> that's going on right now. Like, it's intensifying. I, I need it. to back away. I love it. It's becoming so New Jersey. It's too much New Jersey. It is. It's like, okay, is anyone just going to throw a Wawa on this or like a pork roll? A Wawa in this. I love every time you say Wawa and every time... I remember being like, I don't know what a Wawa is. And your brain just being like, I cannot, ha- what? <laughs> like, your brain just like, offline, not listening anymore. You don't know what a Wawa is. <laughs> and every time I Wawa. I can't believe they don't have them there. Yeah, I mean, we're not a pass-through state. So, I, guess. I mean, if you're going like, I'm, I'm sure I've seen them in, like, Maryland. Yeah, but, like, if you're going to get fuel here you have to get off of the expressway right yeah so there's rest areas on the expressway but otherwise and you know way check-ins but like otherwise you have to get off the expressway and we don't have wawas we got meyer okay i don't know what i'm oh, is. get out of town <laughs> god we have these cultural discussions and like oh my god when we talk to rebecca she's like oh, talks god. about in and outs or whatever yeah. and the oh what it what is the grocery store that has the weird name that I can't... I don't know. All I can think is Piggly Wiggly right now. Piggly Wiggly is definitely one of them. Is it Giant Eagle? What? They're all named after animals. And every time she talks about them, I'm like, I don't know what you're on about. Yeah, she definitely like okay. lays down like locations. Like, that, and it's like, this is, this is just a Texas thing. <laughs> and Texas is huge, but it's just a Texas thing. I joined the Reddit thread for New Jersey. Oh, recently. did you? Is it like a treasure trove? Yeah. Well, like, it, it's interesting because you got a lot of people who just post picture of people who have, like, an obnoxious amount of bumper stickers on their oh, car. And like, get a load of this guy. I love that. And, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but then it's also like, uh, does anyone know we're, like, a good coffee shop that, like, actually roasts their own beans? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. We used to have an amazing coffee shop that... And we have some good ones still, but like this one, yeah, it was my favorite roaster. And their hours were always like not great. And mm-hmm. then their hours got worse and worse and they just never came back. They didn't even tell us. <laughs> just, it wasn't like, uh. it wasn't like, hey, we're gonna be closing our door next week. It was just like, hey, see you never. And it was a successful business. He just, and like respectfully was like, you know, I, I have a little kid. I want to be home. With my kid. Oh, okay. And so, like, you know, okay, great. I'm really glad you put that priority out there. God damn it, dude. <laughs> like, I really liked it there. There were, like, a couple more Oh, things there were more thoughts. I'm on. sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I totally let us wander. <laughs> we did wander. Um, Even though, like, I, I mentioned my three dates thing, Um, I've always just kind of looked at the steps in this chapter, the beats in this chapter. Inkling this could work. Deepening desire. Maybe this will work. You know, mm-hmm. like, literally just uh, getting to know each other better and better and getting more and more vulnerable with mm-hmm. each other. Vulnerability is something I need to do a better job of allowing my characters to have. Yeah, I feel like vulnerability is so it's hard to so do hard. because it's got to be believable. So much tension comes from people withholding. Yeah. Also, if someone is vulnerable and then their vulnerability is, um, isn't, what is the word I'm trying to find? Um... If their vulnerability isn't, not respected, but is, like, betrayed, then it's so much Mm -hmm. harder to come back from that. But that's a, that's, that's the third act breakup. Yeah, man. (laughs) You hinge on that. The third act breakup, yeah. Okay, so I also don't want to, like, make it sound like this is such an easy breezy section, because a lot of people do struggle with, I think, writing the, the middle of the book. Because the middle, it feels like it can be long and not really about anything. Yeah. 
And I think you really need to know what you're setting up for. Like, you kind of have to keep in mind what the fight is going to be, what the end end plot explosion is going to hinge on, and you need to be setting up the dominoes for those to fall. And I think that's vague enough that it's unhelpful, <laughs> but I'm going to leave it on that. Um, But I think that's a really good point, is, like, this is not the middle slog. You're, oh no, this totally is. Well, yeah, but like it, it totally is. But like if you're looking at it as like the whole plot, like you have a lot of raising everybody's hopes so that when they fall, yes. it really feels heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And before we forget the final point, uh-huh. um, is it that you stomp on the, the beats? midpoint okay, of love right, right. plot rest? <laughs> <laughs> no. Midpoint of love plot rest. Mm-hmm. It's like that they're reaching their zenith. They've never been at this point in their relationship before, whether that's in terms of trust or vulnerability mm-hmm. or, you know, at any aspect of a relationship where you can be like, this is new territory for me, for us. And that then that's when you get a plot punch, plot steps in mm-hmm. and starts knocking shit down. Yeah. Because this is the moment at the very middle of the book where, you know, dominoes start to fall. Well, right before the dominoes start to fall. Okay, this is the first domino falling. <laughs> Midpoint of love? You know? Yeah. No, I don't, feel like, I don't feel like any dominoes fall there. I think they're just still, like, in this, like, euphoric moment of, like, like everything's good and we are in love and things are great and they're going to work out because love conquers all. And then dominoes okay. start falling. All right, I can okay. see that. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like I'm, I envision it like the machinations are starting to whir because one domino has fallen, and it's like this Rube Goldberg machine where everything starts winding up, and you're like, oh god, it's starting, it's starting, it's starting. Even though people are standing around completely blissfully unaware that paint is gonna fall on their heads because they jumped hmm. over a domino i see it okay so i i see what you're saying here you're saying that essentially like zoom in the characters are lovingly embracing zoom out they're on a cliff and the wind is kick, like kicking up right yes okay like there's that kind of very slight feeling of dread that's there's just like a drop of it. I th- I always assume and it's about to get so much bigger. I always assume that feeling of dread is because I now know the formula, right? So it's not really a dread within the characters as much as a dread within me as a reader or a viewer. It's like um if you're watching a show where characters die off and all of a sudden they're starting to redeem a character that hasn't that isn't normally this redeemable. It's like, oh, crap, this character's going to die this episode, right? Like, the character doesn't know it. The other characters don't know it. But now I feel that dread because I know, like, all of the signs are pointing in this direction. Yeah, that's called irony. <laughs> it's, it's dramatic irony. Yeah. We, <laughs> the way you said it. It's a thing. Like... You're talking about something that's, like, very... I get that. Like the way you said it was like, so yeah, that's many irony. Are written about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's <I'm> young. <laughs> no, I didn't mean I it like that. It. I mean I it like, it. yeah, no, this does funny. have a name. <laughs> you dumbass. This is what you missed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Congratulations, you showed up to school today. It's called irony. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend said make fun of me for being a nerd <laughs> nerd <laughs> no okay okay uh so i asked you the other day completely unprompted do we get reviews on this podcast oh yeah uh-huh. and you were like yes i have statistics and i was like and you've never shared them i haven't <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. I was gonna be like, I have proof that I, think, I have. Because I definitely, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do have the statistics. And I think at one point I was like, don't share them with me. <laughs> yeah, because I, then... I have a folder in our our uh, our like, drive. <laughs> yeah, that's you analytics. Do. 
And I even added you have a couple s- weeks ago that of a graph I made. <laughs> oh my god. I know. You made a graph. I'm the nerdiest of I'm nerds. So- I honestly am. You are. It's a little bar graph. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. I will look at okay. it. I will post it to Instagram. Oh, don't. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. The color I'll choices it out aren't and good. Put it on the fridge. I'll put it on the fridge. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we do have a couple of reviews. Um, oh, there was more than one? Well, th- <laughs> you sent one I've to only me. seen the one. The other one is on, oh, okay. uh, on another, like, it's not an Apple. And I don't know exactly where it's at. And I can't find it. So, yeah. so how do you know it exists? Because they told me. <laughs> so, oh? Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, because Mika said yeah. she reviewed it. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to find that. You might need to ask her, where did you put it? I will have to. I was really touched by the, the one review that I read. Aww. Damn, yeah. I know we were we were like, we don't care about your thoughts. Don't, don't no, email us. No, but we us. actually do. Very much so. We actually, Amanda cares very much about your thoughts, and I will ask about them once a month. <laughs> Let me find what it was. Because I was like, oh my god, that's so... It was, yeah, oh, it's... Oh where was it? The person said, I feel like the process of writing is similar to my method of working through ideas for painting. And I was, that's not the whole review, but that was the part that really caught my attention because I, like, I just thought that was so interesting because while I paint, I'm not very good at it. And so I disagree. <laughs> I want it. No, I don't consider myself good at it. <laughs> and um, I, I wish I want to hear like a painting podcast. Like, I want to oh, hear someone talk about, like, you know, like, what kind of thought do people who are good at this, you know, yeah, have? Like, what what's their thought process? What are they doing? That's really interesting. Because, like, when, it, when it's just me, I'm just like, why don't the paint stick to canvas? <laughs> why on brush and not and not going on? Yeah, I really liked that they felt like the that it was applicable to more than just writing, also. And applicable to more than just romance writing, because I know that we've really, like, that's our focus. That's what we write, and that's what we talk about a lot. But, but yeah, it resonated with me, too, that um, they felt like it was applicable to more than just, like, what we talk about to them. Like, it was applicable to just creativity. And they also said that we're really fun. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the best yeah. one out of review. So. Praise us. Praise us. Compliment. <laughs> Look, wit. we need it. <laughs> We thrive on it. We thrive on it. We feed on it now. Like a succubus for compliments. Not weird. Oh, yeah. It's not weird. (laughs) It's not weird at all. You're weird. You're weird. You're weird for thinking it's weird. (laughs) Don't make it weird, okay? No, but like, not to be like, write in, please. But, you know, if you want to like, have a comment or a thought on the show. And I like hearing from people. I do too. Having heard from one person. It was really nice, right? (laughs) Um, also, we do have an Instagram, like, hashtag, and it's just hashtag... We do? <laughs> yeah, you <ate. laughs> I'm calling you a-hole a lot tonight. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, I deserve it. I'm like, I have no idea. I'm such an absentee co-host. You do all of, like, you do all of the editing, Okay. <laughs> When I say we don't edit, it's because we don't. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so I should stop being lame and start doing my social media stuff again. Um, but it's hashtag romance writers therapy podcast, which is the longest hashtag ever. And I would happily like shorten it. But Kate left me to my own devices, which means that <laughs> we're going to have a the hashtag the length of the alphabet so yeah that's about 26 i'm letters, sure it I is i'm sure it is because every time i put it in i'm like okay make sure that the r is an r not a t and like stuff like that <laughs> but yeah so you could you could follow our cute little hashtag um and you can talk to us and you can rate us and review us and we really appreciate it we really appreciate you listening you guys are like so cute you know, every now and then, like, I get a random follower in, like, the middle of the day on Twitter, and I'm like, I haven't posted anything in days. Who is this? Where did they find me? How did you get here? And I'm wondering... I... And then I'm, like, having a moment, like, 
I bet it's because of that damn podcast. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to do, god damn it. <laughs> How will I be angry with my bitter soul? <laughs> I have that moment too I want much. you to just picture me like the oldest and grumpiest of old men. Like, that's what, like, I spiritually relate as. Like, anytime anything, like, enters my field of vision, I react to it like, get off my lawn! <laughs> I had that it's same thing good. happen though on TikTok where I was like, is, it, is this from the podcast? Because I haven't done anything here in a minute. So if you have followed me on TikTok and you're like, hey, this lady doesn't do anything. I am sorry. I know. I will fix that. I swear. Eventually. I'm just really tired. It's winter. Okay. So. Winter is hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. But if you do want to follow me on TikTok um, or Instagram, I am at marty the author on tiktok and instagram and you can sign up for my newsletter at www.martyv.com and that's really fun you can find kate Pryor at by kate Pryor at it's like i've i have just deleted all t's from <laughs> words from here on out but it's spelled kate the way you would expect kate to be spelled with a t and not just without one so it's at by it's okay no one says t's anymore it's unfashioned and by k come here <laughs> <laughs> at by kate Pryor on instagram and the twitter and is it oh rate us review us subscribe tell your friends we love you we think you're pretty great email us about your three worst dates <gasps> yes please just because that we need <laughs> we're harvesting you for material for the three dates <laughs> for our story no we're not gonna do that no we won't do that but i do but i would love to talk about it <laughs> so. we're gonna do an episode where i just tell you all the bad I dates know. i've been on that i've already told well, you and i'll tell you all of the accidental dates i've been on because i i've been on a lot of accidental oh, yeah dates. you do do those i did i don't anymore you're just so easy to talk to <laughs> that you just end up on dates and people are like marry me marty and you're like what yeah i didn't even know you liked me that's like how my relationship with my husband started too i just didn't know he liked me <laughs> i thought we were just friends <laughs> so yep so tune in for those conversations so, we love you and